much what you say about Yeah Gonna see Yeah Yeah That's called Fighting Words with Alex Miley Yeah If y'all on the live stream, please make sure y'all double tap the stream And share the live with the arrow button in the corner This is Uncomfortable Conversation Season 4, Episode 6 What's goody, everybody? Yo, 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 yo. You're now tuned into your podcast with your girl, Neat Baby. If you're on the live stream, please make sure you share the live stream. Everybody that's tuning in, I hope you're having a fabulous, marvelous, wonderful Tuesday. Um, as my mama say in my mama vow voice, grand rising to you all. I love you all today. I love you all tomorrow. And as my mama would say, please be sure to tell somebody that you love them today, no matter who it is and where you are. Make sure you drop that L bomb on them. So... I had wanted some topics for discussion for uncomfortable conversations because every time I ask, what do you guys want to talk about? What do you guys want to hear? Everybody gets quiet and silent. But today, my sister Jackie on TikTok definitely said she wanted to talk about absent parents, the parents being absent in the household. And we see it a lot. Okay. When I mean we see it a lot, we have grown up in those type of households. We've witnessed those type of households being formed right before our eyes. When it comes to single mothers, others we are dealing with a lot of absent fathers and in some cases for single fathers we are dealing with a lot of absent mothers i say the two goes hand in hand and we don't know how to have uncomfortable conversations about um parents being absent in the household because we're so focused on being the single parent we're so focused on being the it parent and making sure your kids have everything it matters it matters and when it had when it comes to having an uncomfortable conversation we simply have to learn how to co-parent how to deal with each other how to coexist how to still love on each other and and forgive each other from what you guys are going through a lot of households are deal are dealing with parenting on emotions the parenting are dealt with emotions the father don't like the mother the mother don't like the father the father's not doing enough for the mother the mother can't do enough for the father the father wants these x y and z's and the mother don't want the child to have x y and z's we have seen it happen so many times every day on social media across the globe over this world how many times mothers don't want to send proper clothing with their child to their father's house because they feel like their father should already have these proper clothing how many times does single mothers get into it with their father the fathers the baby daddies and the baby daddies being single fathers we're getting into it with the mothers over the craziest things that can be compromised can be communicated can be talked about and can be handled and dealt with because when we talk about the child you're not focusing on the child's mental state you're not focused on the child's emotional state and you're not focused on the child's feelings you're not worried about the child's feelings emotional or mental all you're worried about is my baby mama always talking about she can't drop the kids off with xyz amount of clothes because i'm supposed to have xyz amount of clothes it is okay to go to walmart and have walmart items that you send with your children to the baby father's house that is okay i don't care if you dress your kids down and design and Balenciaga, but when that child goes somewhere, they still supposed to be properly clothed. And although he is not meeting his half, or although you are not meeting your half, it is okay. Communicating and talking about it will understand the compromising of everything. A lot of fathers stop what they're doing for the child because they feel like child support is enough. I've witnessed my brother pay child support for three children. I've witnessed my brother outside of child support still do for his children. I witnessed my brother outside of child support support still get his children still still spend time with his children take his sons out on movies and little dates and trips father and son's trips i still witness my brother do this now my brother has full custody of his youngest son okay his baby boy he has full custody of it and although single mothers love to shout i'm a single mother i'm a single father we need to pay attention uh, i'm a single mother i'm a single a single mother but we need to pay attention to the single fathers as well because a lot of you women can be absent with your children a lot of you women can be absent with your children and your children are being raised by their fathers and your children are being raised by their grandmothers and grandfathers and your children are being raised by your sisters and your brothers their uncles and their aunts because you don't want to own up to the responsibility that you brought into this world and Michael Jackson said it best if you can't feed yourself or feed your children do not have the children if you can't actually compromise and be the adult that you're supposed to be to take care of that child's mental state emotional state and physical state of mind body and health then you need to re go to the board and redo your drawing board 
We don't have uncomfortable conversations about parenting skills. Are you actually sitting down and communicating about what you're not doing and what you're not able to do for that month? If you can't physically pay for child care, if you can't physically buy diapers and pay for your cars and get your car note and get your car insurance, communicate it. Talk about when somebody's going to be able to buy diapers and when somebody is not. Communication is the key to all things. Absent parents is not going to get it done because soon as that child makes it to the NBA, the soon as that child child is a doctor or a lawyer as soon as that child is doing something for themselves they're going to look at their mother or their or whoever's parenting them and who's ever in in charge and who's ever helping them and loving on them more than anything an absent person is only an absent person you can't be absent in school a xyz amount of days and not fail if you're absent in a child's life XYZ amount of years, you're going to fail them. You're going to fail yourself. And as soon as they're doing something about themselves, you want to jump into their life. No, that's not how it works. You have to go back and you have to literally pick up the pieces because you weren't able to compromise because you weren't able to fully co-parent. And sometimes it's not always the other parent's fault. Sometimes women will hinder the father from being in the child's life because they're angry. Sometimes women and men will hinder their child's feelings feelings and emotions because they're upset with the baby mama or the baby father. That is what we see all the time. How many times did you hear it in your house? When your parents divorce or your parents split, oh, I don't like that. You come get them. You come get them when you want to get them out of that. You ain't going to his house because I ain't sending you over there. When then I always got to see you over there. You always calling me, talking about you hungry. You always da da da. Besides allowing you being with your father and you still supplying for some, so you can get a box of noodles and send them with a box of noodles to their daddy house and they'll be good. It's just the principle of them being there. Stop hindering these children and then get mad when they have anger issues. Stop taking away from these children and get mad when they're dealing with trauma on the inside and they want to harm themselves and they feel like nobody listening to them and nobody cares about their feelings. Nobody cares about their thoughts. Nobody cares about their mental state of mind because when you grow up and you end up like that, you end up st stuck in a place of anxiety, depression, and stress and emotion feeling like your parents don't give a fuck about you. What you're doing, men, you're showing your young daughters that it's okay for a man to walk out your life. What you're showing your young daughters is it's okay for not having somebody always there for you. It's okay for having somebody that's in and out it's okay to for have a man show up when they can it's okay to every time your birthday or christmas or holidays come around i don't have nothing i look at your mama and see if your mama gonna have everything it's okay that's what you're showing your children as women you're showing your sons that it's okay to have someone rule over you it's okay for somebody to control you it's okay because i'm not finna communicate with your father i'm not finna communicate anything with your dad i'm not finna allow you to go over there if you're not going to be properly taken care of like i take care of you at home that is what we're teaching. That is what we're going through. And, and we as the children and we as the people, we're being raised up like that. We're being, we're being fixated on nobody loves me. My mama told me my daddy don't care. My daddy told me my mama don't care. My daddy told me my mama was a bitch. My daddy told me my mama was a hoe. Stop telling your children that. My mama told me my daddy was having all these kids and he didn't really care about me and he go pick up his other kids. Stop telling your children that. And that is still part of being an absent parent because when you're absent physically, you're absent mentally. I say, let's say that again. When you're absent physically and you're constantly throwing shade on the next person and throwing shade on the next person, you're, you're absent mentally. Stop doing that if you want a consistent environment around your child be communicative of that be communicative be communicative of how you want consistency how you want boundaries be communicative sometimes people can't read your fucking mind People can't read that she wants she wants security, she wants safe spaces, she wants she wants everything to be a certain way. And sometimes you have to know, goddammit, baby, that everything ain't gonna go the right way. Everything ain't gonna go the way you want it to go. But let it know that it's gonna be on the right track. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you gotta have balance. So when it's going too good, know that something bad gonna happen. When it's going too positive, know that something negative is gonna happen to balance your ass out, to humble you out. Everything is not gonna always go in the way it is supposed to be planned. If you're not actually talking to your children about what they want and how they feel about when you argue if you're not actually toning yourself down about having certain uh, certain arguments around your children when you're actually having uncomfortable conversations with your spouse your co-parent your partner whoever you raising these children up when you're actually doing that 
You take away trauma. You take away anger issues. You take away mental illnesses. You take away bipolarism. You take away all these different things. You're taking that away because what you're doing is showing them that I care about how you feel. I care about how you feel as me as your parent. I care about how you feel about your other parent. And this is what we're doing. How can we help you? How can we assist you? What is it that you want us to do? You would be surprised if you sit your six-year-old, eight-year-old, 10-year-old, 13-year-old, 16-year-old down. You ask them what can you do and what expectations that they have for you and your co-parent and your other parent and the person that you're dealing with, you'll be shocked at what they tell you. Listen, understanding, freedom, safe spaces. Listen, understanding, freedom, safe spaces. They don't want to hear y'all arguing all the time. They don't want to hear about how you feel about that person all the time. And they don't want you to tear them down because who they look like. They can't handle that. They don't want to be teared down for who they look like. Oh, you little, fuck you. You do that sometimes. You take your anger out on your children. Stop. Communication. And that's not on you. If you put it out there in the universe and you put it out there for your other parent, your, your baby's father, your baby daddy to do what is right, trust me. And he don't take that willpower and that initiated to do what is right for his children, what is right for his child, what is right for his son, or what is right for his daughter. Guess what? That ain't on you. You let that child know and you let that child see a lot of us filter our children. You let them understand that this is not what a man's supposed to do. This is not what a father's supposed to do. This is not parenting. They're not supposed to be absent in your life. I'm not the reason why they're absent in your life. This is what they choose to do. Trust me, I see it every day with my nieces. Somebody that pick and choose when they want to come in and come out. Somebody that always empty handed. Somebody that always want to show up for the cookout and eat, but ain't never got nothing to bring to the table. Somebody that's always busy and booked and busy and doing something, but ain't never got actual appropriate time for their children. Who get their children, who rather sit on their phone besides actually spend time with their children and spend and play house, do whatever it is, cops and robbers. Let's speak on it. Let's be there because we have to absolutely have these uncomfortable conversations. Because if we don't have these uncomfortable conversations, I say, we don't know how to fix the issues. We don't know how to fix the issues. We don't know how to overcome these problems. We're supposed to be fixing the generational curses in our homes right now. And if we don't understand it and understand it and understand how the hell you expect your child, how the hell you expect your teenagers, how the hell you expect your young adults to get through life. We're constantly parenting on how we were parenting. And we have to understand that that parenting came from how their parents parented. And we know that it wasn't right. Stop yelling at your children when you're upset and whooping them and beating them. It's a different way. Because what you're showing them is, if I fuck up, I get beat up. If I fuck up, I get talked down upon. If I fuck up, it's not a lesson or a mistake. It's something that I should never fucking do again. We've been through that. We know what it's like to be at a one-person household, a single-parent household. We know what it's like to travel from state to state, to be with your father one time and for the summertime, and then be with your mother for the school time, and then turn around and be with your father for the school time, and then be with your mother for the summertime. We know what it's like to go through divorce battles. We know what it's like to look like somebody and then get frowned upon because we look like that person at the time of their anger. At the time of their upsetness, at the time of their frequency being in a low vibrational state, we know what it's like. We should teach our children better, be there for them mentally, physically, and emotionally. Because if we don't, it's going to be a world full of anger. And when somebody is anger, angry, they can beat somebody up. They can rob somebody. They can kill somebody. They can destroy something. They can tear somebody down when somebody is feeling good. Lift people up. Lift yourselves up. Be all that you can be in all the times that you can be it. Know that it is time for us to have these uncomfortable conversations with ourselves and look in the mirror and stop projecting. We're projecting on our children. We're projecting on our co-parenting. We're projecting on ourselves because we don't know the proper way. Just simply forgive, love, and keep moving. Knowing that everything is going to be a lesson. It's a balance in life. Stop being so judgy. Be kind on yourself. Be gentle on yourself. Be kinder to your children. Be gentle on your children. Be kinder when you're communicating. Be fully communicative of what you want. Set your boundaries with your children. Set your boundaries with your co-partners. Set your boundaries with your baby daddies and your baby mamas. Know that it is time to be there for the children. These young pandemic babies that we have now are our star seeds. Or our indigo children. 
are our children that are supposed to save the humanity. And if we don't teach them about being kind to one another, if we don't teach them about loving one another, if we don't teach them about forgiveness, if we don't teach them about showing up for each other and sharing, if we don't teach them about things that they need to be taught about for early survival and loving and being a part of the new humanity, they won't know a thing. They will be fixed on evil and hatred and judgmentalness. With the children seeing the home is what they absolutely end up growing up to be. How many of you all dated men that were like your father? How many of y'all dated women that were like your mother? Some prince said, maybe I'm just like my mother. Mm -mm -mm -mm. She's never satisfied. It's a song that I just got. And maybe I'm just like my father. And this is what it sounds like when doves cry. You heard it. We don't want to parent that way. We are our own human beings. We are our own persons. We are our own people. Sometimes we fixate ourselves on these type of things because that's all we know. That is all you know. I dated a lot of Tauruses that was like my mama because I love my mama. Couldn't nobody tell me about my mama. I knew my mama had flaws, but couldn't nobody tell me different. I wanted the flaws and all. Oh, I know I've been there. Some of it might not resonate, but instill, in fact, teach them that their parents are supposed to be there for them. Teach them that they're supposed to have safe spaces. Teach them that they're supposed to be taken out on a date. They're supposed to be laughing. They're supposed to be happy. They're supposed to express their feelings. They're supposed to have uncomfortable conversations. They're supposed to disagree to agree, but always communicate so they can understand the other, other person's point of view. Teach them these things. Teach them about life and survival. Teach them about being kind and, and cheerful and cheerful to their neighbor. Teach them about being respectful to their elders. Teach them about being respectful to the people that are passed on and transition, teaching them about their answers, teaching them to pray before bed, teaching them love and light because that's what you walk in. It will, it would take up a lot, but being an absent parent would give them nothing. Being an absent parent and not being there for the child will show them that nobody gives a fuck for them. Being an absent parent will actually teach your children that being absent is okay. Being absent is okay. They can come and go as they please. That is not okay. Being an absent parent, being an absent co-parent, being somebody that is not physically there for their children, it is not okay. In no way, no shape, no form, no fashion. That is not okay. Ashe? And I want to thank you all for tuning in to my live stream. If y'all miss your podcast today, you can always go back and stream your podcast on Apple Podcasts, on Spotify, and the Anchor app. I'm your girl, Nee Baby. Don't y'all ever forget it. I love y'all today. I love y'all tomorrow. No matter what is going on in your life, know that it'll all be okay. We're getting through things. We're working through things. And we're growing through things. In fact, don't be an absent parent. Communicate. Be there. Step up and forgive. Forget and move on. Teach these children that it's okay to make a mistake stay don't fuss at them don't yell at them don't cuss at them don't project your feelings upon them teach them while teaching yourself i love y'all i'm your girl knee baby and we out